Hi, um, my name is Christy Korn, and this summer I worked at Rockefeller University in the lab of Yevgeny Sorotin. Uh, Dr. Sorotin's lab is a neurophysiology lab that works in both rats and humans. My project specifically worked in humans and tried to figure out how neurons in the brain code odor information. So the reason why such research is so important is because in diseases such as Alzheimer's or other neurodegenerative diseases, um, one of the first symptoms is diasoma, which is olfactory malfunction. By hopefully further understanding neuron information, we will be able to develop early diagnostic tests. So a little background. Scientists are still debating how the MT cells code odor properties. The MT cells I am referring to are the MT cells in the olfactory bulb, which is the first region of our brain that receives odor information after the receptors in our nose. These MT cells are what tell higher portions of our brain odor information. Some believe these MT cells code in what is called a spatial code. This means that the rate at which these neurons fire and the shape of their firing is what tells higher portions of our brain odor information. Others, however, favor temporal code. A temporal code states that there is some cycle, and within that cycle, when the neuron fires is what relays odor information to higher portions of our brain. Since recent research has suggested that when it comes to humans and when it comes to the odor property of intensity or concentration, it is more likely that it is this temporal code that is used in mitral tough cells, um, we decided to further examine the temporal code. One problem with when you're talking about a temporal code, if you're talking about a cycle, you need something to trigger that cycle. Since it is the distance between that trigger and when the neuron fires, that is proportional to concentration and is what relays information to higher portions of our brain. Therefore, we hypothesized, we're trying to test what that trigger is, we hypothesized that that trigger is onset of inhalation. In order to conduct this experiment, we use a psychophysical <coughs> analysis. This means that since there are no instruments that are available to us, or ethical, um, to <laughs> use in humans um, to directly record neural information, instead we built a machine that would present a number of odor stimuli to subjects, and then we would record their perceived intensity. And based on changes in perceived intensity, we can then deduce information about the neural code. So the experiment we actually conducted to see if um, onset of inhalation is the trigger to this um, neural code is as follows. First, our olfactometer emitted two tones to signal the start of the trial. Our olfactometer then cued an inhalation, an exhalation, an inhalation, and an exhalation. The first set of inhalation and exhalations were just to um, synchronize the subject sniffing with our timing. During the second inhalation and exhalation, we actually presented an odor. We, had, we were presenting the odor pinene, and we had five different concentrations that we repeatedly presented. However, during half of our trials, we presented this puff of odor. It's important to note that these are puffs, so the odor does not persist throughout the whole sniff. We presented the puff of odor in synchrony with the onset of inhalation. During the other half of our trials, we presented the odor, the puff of odor delayed 500 milliseconds from this one. The reason why this is testing if onset of inhalation is what triggers this neural code is because you can think of this time point here as starting a stopwatch. And then but by delaying when we present the odor, we are making the stopwatch go longer before the neuron fires. And by delaying that, we're basically inserting a delay or a lag or a latency into the neural code that should then translate to a change of perception. However, we saw something very different. Um, these are this, this is the psychophysical analysis for the two subjects. Um, you can see on this axis, increase in concentration. On this axis, increasing perceived intensity, or how the subject rated their intensity. Um, each line, which on this graph is indistinguishable, um, on each line, uh, one line represented one odor timing, and the other line represented the other odor timing, or the delayed one. You can see that these lines are on top of each other and very close here, which means that the perceived intensity did not change for our two timings. So to work backwards, what this means is that since the, our perceived intensity for our subjects did not change, that means that that latency that we thought that we were inserting into the neural code was non-existent which meant when we thought that stopwatch was starting, must have started at a different time. So this indicates that 
the temporal code must be triggered by something other than onset of inhalation. In the future, my lab looks to build off this experiment by doing other experiments with other um, sub-sniff odor variables, specifically trying to look at adaptation. Again, with the overall goal of hopefully developing an early diagnostic test for diseases like Alzheimer's. Um, I would like to thank my mentor, um, Dr. Schoen and Kieran first for helping me in my lab this summer. And I would also like to thank um, Dr. Cox and Ms. Finley for putting together this presentation.